how do I want to start this? I've never started a book review. I've never started a book. I feel like I should have like a pipe. Good evening and welcome to Kyle and Kristen's book club. Maybe some, maybe some classical music as well. Anyway, this is our book club and welcome to it. We're taking a book one at a time, something that has meaning to us and our values. We're reading it with you, our community, and then we're discussing it. The book that we chose for our first ever book club book is a book called Everything That Remains. This book is written by The Minimalists, Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, and they are the two individuals that inspired me to become a minimalist, and this is the why to book, so why to become a minimalist. And chapter one was called Fluorescent Ghosts. That kind of fit pretty well. And so the title of the, the first chapter was really fitting because it was basically, the first chapter was spent diving into uh, Joshua Fields Milburn childhood and, and, and sort of what he went through as a child in a broken home, alcoholic mother, a father who struggled with mental illness, and just sort of like what he experienced with instability and not knowing always where the next meal was coming from and just not knowing what to expect every day when he would get home, which, would led, which that led him into the corporate world. He decided for himself, I'm going to be, I'm gonna go for the American dream. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make as much money as I can. I'm gonna get into the corporate world. And he started off working for, a, for some retail chains as the regional manager. Mm -hmm. Regional director, I believe. Absolutely, and he and what was really interesting about his talk about his um, his work life is that he kept on he kept on wanting to to do more and more and more like wanting to get a promotion, but with every promotion came more and more work, more and more stress. And he was just really talking about had this interesting segment about he was talking about what poor health a lot of the workers were in, a lot of failed marriages, a lot of unhappiness. Yeah, he dived. He he did a very good job and very descriptive description of the workplace environment just how it was just kind of blah and he just sterile sterile and just everybody was there it's sort of like going through the motions and it just seemed kind of like fake and mm -hmm. unimportant like just everything mm -hmm. was just kind of not fulfilling and just kind of blah. not only that he talked about how like he was actually also like really unhappy and would have like nightmares about work and just like constantly like on his phone, checking emails, just nonstop. Living the American dream, he had bought and built his own house, married his wife, and he filled his car with two, with luxury cars, nice suits and shoes, all these material things, all these things that we think we need to make us happy, he had it all. He made a certain amount of money and spent even more and still didn't yet find happiness. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that's pretty much where it leaves off. Yeah, that's pretty much the first chapter is going through his backstory because this is mostly like a memoir and sort of how they became the minimalists and why. So that was chapter one, the overview. And so now we're going to talk a little bit about our reflection and like what it means to, to us and how we relate to the chapter itself. And so I'll start. And I've always... I've, I've never, I've never seen, I, I started out wanting the same things. Um, I, but when I went to college, I went, my first goal was I wanted to be, um, I went into marketing and I wanted to be living in New York City or Chicago or LA and, and work for a big marketing firm, be an advertiser, make millions of dollars. Like that was what my dream was. I thought it was before going into college and I quickly realized that that's not what life is all about. There's all types of things, all things that can, all different types of things that can make me happy. And that's when I decided to be a teacher. Long story short, I decided to be a teacher somewhere in the middle of my college experience. And I found happiness in service. And knowing that going into teaching was not going to be a making a lot of money by any means, I decided to find my happiness elsewhere. And so I can really relate to the idea of somebody wanting to run the rat race, work the nine to five, get the promotions, and acquire all this stuff, I, I, I remember a time in my life wanting that for myself mm -hmm. and then deciding that that's not what I wanted before really getting thick into it. And I'm glad mm -hmm. I never, I didn't get stuck in that rut before realizing that's not what I wanted. Right. Um, and then for me, like I've always been, had some interest being younger, um, wanting to like pursue um, singing, like I thought about really trying to make it big in that way, totally different environment, but like 
like rising higher and higher in the performance side of things. It turns out in college, I kind of realized, hey, you know, I love singing, but performance is not what brings me a lot of joy necessarily. I, I liked really helping people as well. And, and I ended up majoring in both social work and vocal performance and also having kind of a similar career to Kyle as like career of service, never really going to make a lot of money. Um, but I was okay with it. Still kind of doing a little bit of music here and there, but not with the same goal of making it big. Right. And, and it's, it's not even just about making it big or not. It's mostly just about like realizing what does truly make you happy. And I think we lucked out in that we figured it out at a very young age, what makes us happy. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, you know, it's always changing new things will make you happy. Old things that used to make you happy don't anymore. And I think we, we got, we're blessed to be able to recognize the things that make us happy and be able to pursue them now. Mm -hmm. And we did not get stuck in some sort of the rat race or get stuck in a job that we hate and we're just going through the motions. And, 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 and this is something that I never, ever even considered. Even when I was thinking about trying to be like an advertiser was, I don't want to just put my nose down, do my 35, 40 years and then be like, ah, okay, now it's time to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. I want to enjoy every day right here, right now. I don't care. I don't, I'm not thinking about... 55, 60, 65 year old me. I'm thinking about 27 year old me right now. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not making choices and making plans for the future and, and acting and, and being responsible. But I care about me today because this is all that we're guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And I think when we get so focused on just our career, and it's, this is not in the book, but I, if you listen to the podcast that they put on, the Minimalist Podcast, they talk a lot about they talk a lot about the idea of when people always asking you what you do. It's a small talk. What do you do? What's mm -hmm. it's basically saying? What do you do to make money so I can compare myself to you on a social scale? But he he tells us in his podcast, both of them tell us, don't ask what you do. Say what are you passionate about. Right. That's totally different. You can say I'm passionate about writing. I'm passionate about making videos. I'm passionate about painting. You don't have to talk about what do you do to make for money, to make your money. And I think that having a outlook on life where I don't tie everything I am to my job. Right. I think that's, that's pretty fair. And like also, I mean, yes, also going along with that, like, um, since you're not tying everything to your job, you're like really taking time to like do things that you enjoy in your non-work time. Mm -hmm. Having Absolutely. interest. Having other things to make me happy and bring yeah. me joy. So that's kind of what the chapter's about and that's our personal reflection on the matter. How do you connect to the chapter? What, what, what thoughts did you have? Um, reflections on the chapter for yourself. How does, how does his story relate to your story? Or mm -hmm. is there any personal reflections that you have on the chapter? And what do what makes you happy? What are you passionate about? Are you living out your passions? Let us know in the comments down below. And next Friday, be looking out for chapter two. And I'm thinking it'll we'll get more deep into the why behind minimalism yeah. thing. So we're pretty excited to start this. If, if you have any other tips about doing a book club, because we've never done this before, let us know what you want to see next time. Did we forget anything? Is there anything we left out? Uh, is the lighting okay? Everything like that. This is something kind of new on Charred Territory. So it's, it's, it was fun. Yep. Fun reading, and, and it'll be fun checking the comments out. So, we love you guys. Thanks for watching. Find your gift. Share it with the world. And remember, you are worth it. See you tomorrow.